And when he did, when he bowed his head, this old earth had a shiver run over its back. It must have had a nervous prostration. For the Bible said that the whole earth from the sixth to the ninth hour was dark, was over the whole face of the earth. And the earth shook and the rocks ripped Amen. and the temple veil tore from top to the Amen. bottom. Amen. The sacrifice box turned over. The son of the living God died. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. He was so dead. Until the sun recognized it. He was so dead. Till the moon recognized it. He was so dead. Till the stars recognized it. He was so dead. Till the earth recognized it. He was so dead. Till the elements recognized it. The atmospheres recognized it. Everything had to know. That was the son of God. For God's word could not fail. He was promised from the Garden of Eden the seed that would bruise the serpent's head. Now what happened to him? Where did he go? When he left the cross and went in Joseph of Armenia's tomb, he was so poor he had not a place to lay his head. He was born in a manger with a black name behind him as an illegitimate child. He was laughed at, made fun of, scoffed of in the earth. He was made fun of and rejected. And when he died, he had to die through capital punishment between two thieves and did not even have a place to bury him. And he was buried in another man's grave. The very God of heaven coming to earth. Who do we think we are? They have to go through a little suffering. What he did for us. Think of it, friends. Study of it. The Roman soldier said, Truly, that's the Son of God. The sinner had to recognize it. Judas said, I have betrayed innocent blood. He had to recognize it. The whole earth recognized it. Then where did he go? When a man dies, does that finish it? No, sir. He had to die that way because God's Bible said that he would die that way. And he trusted God's word. That's the reason he could say in his life, destroy this temple and I'll raise it up in three days. For David said one place only in the Bible under the inspiration when David, the man of God, the prophet, that was anointed with the word said, I'll not suffer my holy one to see corruption. Neither will I leave his soul in hell. Jesus said, you destroy this body and I'll raise it up in three days. He knew that God's word could not fail. Oh my. If he could rest solemnly up on that, believing that God's word could not fail, how much more can we rest the solemnly that we have been born again by the Holy Ghost and it a witness in our heart right now that we know that our Redeemer liveth and will come again someday. Rest assured that those that are in Christ will God bring with Him. Now notice, there He was. He knew that not one cell of that body would corrupt. 72 hours corruption sets in. That's the reason he never stayed the three days. He died on Friday afternoon and was up Sunday morning. But it was within them three days. Within those three days, he has to rise again. Because he trusted God's word. Here he goes. Where did he leave when he left? The Bible said he ascended. He went and preached to the souls that were in prison. That repented not in the long suffering of the days of Noah. His soul, his spirit... His theosophies of his own being went down the following. Would you like tonight to follow him a few minutes? Let's see where he went. Just below the regions of mortal beings lays a rim of demon power. 
Below that, just above that, lays the souls of the unjust. Below it lays the very domain of Satan, hell. Then just above us lays the Holy Spirit. Then under the altar lays the souls of the just man. The next is God himself. One going downward, one going upward. The two spirits are here on earth influencing the people of this earth. And when Jesus died, he goes up down there. I can see him on that Friday afternoon after his death. Knock on the door of the regions of the lost. That's following him. The door opens. There was women. There was men. There were young ladies. There were old. There were all together in that hideous place called the prison of the lost souls. If I had time, I'd like to tell you, and it might be just a vision, but at one time I visited that place and screamed for mercy. When I was a sinner going under operation, when I come out, I was standing in the west with my hands up towards the heaven and a cross shining on me. But in that mournful place, there Jesus walked to the door. Everything had to witness that he was the Son of God because they had been preached to in the long suffering of the days of Noah. Knocks at the door. He said, I am he who Enoch spoke of. I am the seed of the woman. That was the bruise of the serpent's head. Every word of God has been fulfilled. I've just died down at Calvary. And I purchased my church. And the ones that Enoch spoke of, I'm he. And they was without mercy, without hope, because they had transgressed. And the door was shut in their face. On down into the reaches of demons. On down to the very gates of hell. He knocks at the door. This is when he's in the tomb, his body is, waiting the resurrection. He visits the places that the just and unjust goes. Where you'll go one of these days, to one of the other places. And he knocks at the door of hell. And when it did, the devil come out. And I can just hear him say, Oh, so finally you arrived. I sure thought I had you when I killed Abel. You see, when that seed was promised in the Garden of Eden, the devil has constantly tried to destroy that seed. Amen. And the death of Abel and the coming of Seth was just the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That seed must continue. And he tried to destroy it. He said, I thought I had you when I destroyed Abel. I thought I had you when I destroyed the prophets. I was positive I had you when I beheaded John. But now after all you were right, I've got you now. Oh my. I can hear him say, Satan, come here. He's boss now. <laughs> Reaches over, grabs that key of death and hell off his side. Yes. Hung it on his own side. I want to serve notice on you. Amen. You've been a bluff long enough. I am the virgin born son of the living God. My blood is still wet on the cross and the full debt is paid. Amen. You have no rights no more. You are stripped. Give me those keys. That's right. Turns around and gives him a good healthy kick and slams the door again and says, Stay in there. I'm boss now. <laughs> Now, he didn't have the keys to the kingdom because he gave them to Peter. We get on that in the morning at water baptism. Amen. But he had the keys to death and hell. And he took them. After his resurrection, he said, I got the keys to death and hell. Amen. Peter had the keys of the kingdom. Satan had the keys of death and hell. But now Jesus has got them. He's boss.